is the Lord, Lion Church in Jesus Christ. Praise Him on Facebook Live. Praise Him wherever you are in the sanctuary, on, in the parking lot, inside of your car. Let me hear your voices. Let me hear some horns blowing. Where is everybody at? Let me hear the horns blowing. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him from the north, south, east to the west. Praise the Lord. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Yeah. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, or, or in whom there is no worth, no help. His breath goeth forth. He returneth to his earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever, which executeth judgment for the oppressed, who, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord looseth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. Y'all say it with me. Praise ye the Lord. Somebody say it again. Praise ye the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your presence, O oh God. O oh God, as we gathered here in your name, O oh God. God, we came in our living rooms, on our back porches, in our dens, in our bedrooms, in the parking lot. Father, we're streaming wherever we are. We come to glorify and magnify your name. Father, we're asking you, O oh God, that your name gets the glory on today. Father, we're praying, O oh God, for the furthering of your services. Father, we're praying, O oh God, that somebody will be empowered, O oh God, that somebody will be broken through, O oh God, that somebody will be freed, O oh God. O oh God, in the midst of your service, O oh God, we come, O oh God, none other than to give your name what's due you, O oh God. Father, we come to uplift you, O oh God. We come, O oh God, that the hands will be loose, O oh God, on oh, today in the minds of your people, O oh God, that sick bodies will be healed, O oh God, that the lame will walk, O oh God, that the blind will see, that the deaf ear will be able to hear, that the dead will be raised. Father, it's by your power. Oh God, it's by your anointing, but by your spirit, oh God. We come and we declare your glory, oh God, from the hilltop, on Facebook, in the parking lot, in the living room, in our cars, in our bodies. God, we come to give your name, the praise, the glory, and the honor. That is to you, and we all say praise ye the Lord. Come on, music, praise ye the Lord. Somebody clap your hands in the parking lot.
out there. Hallelujah. If it had not been for the Lord, which was on my side, I don't know where I would be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'd be lost like a ship without a sail, y'all. And so for that, I give God the praise. For that, I give God the worship. Because he deserves it. On a good day, he deserves it. On a bad day, he deserves it. When I'm going through, he deserves it. When I'm up, he deserves it. When I'm down, he still deserves it. He deserves everything that I can give him. Hallelujah. And today, I'm declaring that we're going to be grateful this morning. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be grateful this morning for all that he's done for me. Hallelujah. I'm asking that you put your hands together. Give my auntie a hand as she comes at this time to lead this song. Be grateful.
Praise the Lord, Diane. Do we have any grateful people in the parking lot? I got one. Truly, we have a lot to be grateful for. Amen. Think about what's going on in the world. What's going on in other countries. What has transpired and what has happened even in our own country. Some of the things that are happening even in our own city. When we look around and we see what's going on in our own homes. Even in our church. Somebody ought to be grateful. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I, I think I've done three funerals this week. Another one. We have another one next week. It's already lined up. And I'm not gonna say that that leaving here is a is a bad thing. Because God is in control. And God knows when it's time for us to go. But the good news is, there is life after death. Uh, in other words, death is not the end of the story. It's just a part of it. So, so while we're here, while the blood is still running warm in our veins, while we still have our mental capacity, somebody ought to just tell them thank you. Somebody, somebody, because you just don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Somebody ought to just tell God thank you. Hallelujah. For this moment in life. Amen. We give honor to whom all the honor is due. We certainly thank God. Hallelujah for this choir. <laughs> Amen. The praise team. They the choir. <laughs> Amen. Singing out of their hearts in front of the direction of the elder, uh, Gregory Allen Jr. Amen. Amen. And I'm a co-sign with you, there, uh, uh, Minister. Uh, Alan, that uh, nobody else wants to come back and tell them thank you. Uh, I come back to tell the Lord this morning, thank you. Because the truth of the matter is that there could be a vase on my fireplace. There, there, there could be a place out at sunset with a little vase to put flowers in. But we're here. And because we are here, it is not of our own doing, but it is the mercy and grace of God that has kept us another week. Amen, somebody. So, so if you don't want to tell them thank you, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over here with these rocks. Because God is able to make these rocks cry out. And tell them thank you. Hey man, somebody. So we honor, we honor the praise team. We honor our sister pastor who is over at Evans, Bishop Evans, Greater Bethlehem Temple. And they just had to rush him, uh, Bishop Evans, to the hospital. So we want to keep him lifted up in prayer. He's got a lot going on. But we serve a God that is able. Come on, somebody. So we're, we, we want the Lord to touch his body. Amen. We, we want to honor all of you, Zion Church of Jesus Christ, all of our evangelists, all of our ministers, our elders. Amen. We certainly want to uh, 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 honor all of the mothers. <laughs> Hallelujah. The mothers have been pressing their way out to the parking lot. So. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We certainly want to honor, hallelujah, the First Lady of Zion Church in Jesus Christ. 
That is our lovely wife. Amen. Hallelujah. Nakia, Deary. We thank God for her and for the children, my children, that God is keeping them. Hallelujah. Uh, Sister Yara got her license on last week. I was so excited about it. But at the same time, I felt so tearful. Because my baby girl is growing up. And I came home the other day and she was gone in the car. They didn't tell me where she was going. I had to call her mom and ask her, where, where my baby? And then I had to I had to pull myself in and I knew all about that. Amen. That's right. That's it. Still call. That's right. So I don't worry. That's it. Amen. The things are changing. Um, our children are growing up. They're not, they not God's little angels anymore like they were when they were in Sister Carter's class. Amen. They're grown angels. <laughs> and we love them and we pray for them. May God keep them. Amen? Amen. It's glad to be home, Zion. I'm glad to be home. I've been gone for a month. I was here last week, and I felt kind of rushed. Um, I want to take my time this morning. Uh, it's just something about being at Zion that's different from anywhere else I've been. I, I thought I said something right <laughs> it, it, It's just something about... Zion Church of Jesus Christ, here on the corner of Altos and Lindsay. That does my heart wonder. Amen. And to see the people of God. We, we've been together a long time, and we've been through some things. It ain't always been pretty. But we still here, Anthony. We still here. And it's only because of God's grace and God's mercy. As we are preparing, as we are preparing um, to celebrate Easter, Easter is, is quickly approaching. It, it so happens to fall on April the 4th, which is First Lady's birthday. <laughs> oh, is it the second? I looked it up and said it was the 4th. Oh, they're going to have to correct that online. Are you sure? <laughs> You don't want to celebrate your birthday with the... the, the, the. Oh. Well, praise the Lord. It's the weekend. There you go. You know, it's funny because I have to celebrate, I have to celebrate Valentine's Day, then I have to celebrate uh, 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 our anniversary, and then I have to celebrate her birthday. I think she did that on purpose. <laughs> oh, it's back to back to back to back. Amen. And then Mother's Day. Lord have mercy. But that is Easter is quickly approaching. I want to set the atmosphere in the parking lot here at Zion Church that the power of God would fall. Hallelujah, on Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Right here in the parking lot, is that all right? Yeah. Amen, so we want to preach and we want to teach, amen, until the power falls in the parking lot. Set the atmosphere, amen? In the book of Luke, chapter number 10, if you have your Bibles with you, Go ahead and open to Luke chapter number 10. We thank God for our Facebook family being with us on this morning. We certainly thank God for uh, any visitors that are with us this morning in the parking lot. You are welcome through our doors. Walk the greatest people in the world. Amen. 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 Luke chapter number 10, verse number 18 through 20. That's 18, 19, and 20 of Luke. 
Jesus talking. And he says unto them, talking to his disciples, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. That's deep all by itself. That means Satan must have been in a hurry. <laughs> Amen. Behold, verse 19, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. Don't worry about that. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. It's, 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 it's just us, so let me just read that one more time. Hallelujah. Amen. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and, and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, absolutely nothing, shall by any means hurt you. Boy, that's a promise there. Thank you, Lord. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not uh -huh. that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written Hallelujah. in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Let's give the Lord a Thank hand you. praise right there. Amen for his word. Hallelujah. I want to use four thought this morning. Amen, Zion Church. I want to talk to us about I've given you power. I've given you power. There is a story about a young man who was allowed, given the opportunity to go to the Vatican. There in the Vatican, there in Rome, he was allowed to go into the Catholic Church. And while he was there, he was talking to one of the fathers, and one of the fathers uh, showed him the treasury, showed him all the riches of the Catholic Church. Uh -huh. So he had an opportunity to go in there, and the father said unto him, Son, hallelujah, no longer can they say silver and gold have we none, because we got it. And the young man looked at him and looked at the silver and the gold. He said, and no longer can you say in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Because you've lost the power that was given the church. Jesus said upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. It's his church. It's not Bobby's church. It's not... It's not Dr. Williams' church, it's not Sister Bonnie's church, amen. But it belongs to God. And upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed the time and the season that we are living in. But this is a time and this is the season where the word of God is being revealed Amen. right before our eyes. Amen. Amen. Some of the promises of God are coming to pass. Yes, they are. God said that there will be a great falling away in the last day. Yes. Folks who have been walking in the way mm, are gonna fall away. But that's not everybody's story. Because even if the elect, the Bible says, could be deceived. If it wasn't for God. If it wasn't for God giving you power to stand in these times. 
times. Well, when we, when we look at what's going on in our world, we find that it's nothing new. Folks turning their backs on God and the goodness of God and the mercy of God and the grace of God is nothing new. Amen. Folks, hallelujah, turning and walking away from spouses. Jesus. Come on, somebody. It's nothing new. Jesus. Even leaving children behind is nothing new. But what makes it significant and what makes it a little different is that now we see this more in the church than just in the world. In the world, we, we see it all the time. But it's amazing how many pastors have shut the doors and walked away and left the flock to fend for themselves. We have folks that have come right in this parking lot and said, Pastor, hallelujah, my pastor closed the doors and, and we have nowhere to go. We didn't even know he was closing the door. But these are trying times. It is a time where our faith, our most holy faith, is being tested and tried by the fires of life, by the storms of life. And it's important, God help me right here, right now through here, that we as the people of God not change gods in the middle of this race. <laughs> this is not the time to walk away from God and start doing your own thing. This is not the time to come up with your own spiritual revelation of what God is requiring of you that's contrary to his word. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And not only that, he says, my word is forever settled in heaven. I change not. If I say it, I shall bring it to pass. But we got folks today who have decided that they know better than God. When God said, trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge me and I will direct your path. It is God who directs our path. And whenever we get in the way of what God is trying to do, you can rest assured you got trouble in on the way. When you think about this 20th century church, the churches are, are magnificent. They're beautiful. The structure of the buildings are magnificent. They, they have a lot to offer you. They, they, they title it programs. We have councils and we have fellowships and we have programs. And, 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 and a lot of the programs that they've created are programs to keep you busy, but do not allow you the opportunity to really be saved. It grabs your attention, but it can't help you be sanctified. So you end up with a form of godliness. But you deny because you want to do your own thing. You want to do it the way the flesh is telling you to do it. You, you want to stand ooh, on your own promise. <laughs> and God 
is calling for the people that will trust him. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No matter what it feels like. Yes. Come on now. That will trust him. Uh -huh. No matter what it looks like. Yes, Lord. We'll trust him. No matter what folks have said. Yes, we'll trust him. God looking for somebody to trust him. In spite of what sweetie told you. I asked you earlier, could I take my time? Because if you let me take my time, shout is on the way. <laughs> we are living in this 20th century church where we feel like we don't have to ask for nobody. We, we don't have to explain ourselves to anybody. And we don't have to take accountability to anything. But God said, come out. I think I got some Bible. Somebody can read the book. Come out from among them and be ye separated, said the Lord. He, he didn't say that just to be saying something. He said it with a reason. He said it with purpose. Because he's already, he already knows your future. Come out from among them. Well, I have to ask the question, who is the them? Anybody that don't believe what you believe is the them. Anybody that's not walking with God like you're walking with God is the them. I would go as far as to say anybody that don't have the Holy Ghost is the them. Did you hear what I said? Because he said, if you don't have my spirit, you're none of mine. And it's my spirit and your spirit that bear witness that we are the children. What shall it look for, Shaha? Of God. See, if you read the book, you find out that Satan got children who transform themselves into the children of life. who have an objective and a purpose to deceive the people of God. Well, I've come through too much. I've, I've cried too much. I, I, I've been through too much affliction. I've been through too much pain. I've been through too much poverty. I've been through too much. I've been abused and lied on and cheated. Listen, I have been through too much to turn my back on God because you got a word. That in the last days, Dr. William, they're going to heat to themselves teachers yes. having itchy ears. Is that what you said? He said they're going to they're going to they're going to go where it feels good. They're going to go where I'm allowed to do whatever I want to do. But the devil is alive. God is looking for a church. A glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. And, and let me help you right quick. <laughs> the only way that you can be a part of that church is you got to have the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is the one that's going to help us get rid of the spot. Help us get rid of the wrinkles that are in my lives. When you got the Holy Ghost and, and you got the Word of God and you read the Word of God, you studied the Word of God, you ate the Word of God, hallelujah, then the Word of God, when you get in a situation, is what's going to come up and he's going to say, come out from among them and be you separated. I know we're living in the last days and I know we want to co-join with everybody and anybody, hallelujah, but you got to be careful. Because folks will lead you away. Come on, Brother Solomon, 900 wise from God. They will have you believing in their God. And their God has no eyes that it can't see. It has no ears that it cannot hear. It has no hands and no legs to stand on and to touch. 
but the God we serve. Lord Jesus, yes. the God we serve, he not only has hands to heal, he not only has legs to catch up with you, but the God that we serve, he sees you in your affliction. He, he, he knows exactly where you are. Yeah, something, something about this, this 20th century church, hallelujah. Uh, they're just funny. <laughs> they're beautiful, but something is missing. Jesus. Wonderful churches, wonderful pastors, and wonderful people, uh, but, but, but there's something missing. Jesus. Because anytime, hallelujah, you're disconnected from a relationship with God Amen. through the Holy Ghost, uh -huh. then there's a problem. That, that, that there's a problem and, 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 and we have to recognize what the problem is. Yes, yes, they claim to know Jesus. They claim to preach and teach Jesus. But yet there's no power mm -hmm, to actually change people's lives. As a matter of fact, people are doing worse. Come on, somebody. Y'all so quiet today. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> because you can have the name on the door. But that does not mean you have the power of God. Because the power is on the inside. Mm, the, 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 the power is the ability to exercise the authority. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You, you can have the name and you can have the programs and you can have the events and you can call it worship. You can call it prayer meeting. You, you can call it whatever you want to call it. But if God has not given you the authority, Jesus. the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. you have a form of godliness and denying the power of Thereof. Paul tells Timothy over in 2 Timothy chapter number 1 verses 6 through 7, wherefore I put thee in remembrance. Sometimes we just, we just need a reminder of who we are. We need a reminder of whose we are. Because this world will offer you so much and this world will do so much to you that it will almost cause you to forget who you are. Am I right about it? So sometimes we just need a reminder of who we are and whose we are. Uh, and he tells him, stir up the gift. Because sometimes we allow the gift, which is the Holy Ghost, to lie dormant in our, in our bodies, in our situations. We have a po me moment and find ourselves, po me another drink. If it wasn't your toes, don't worry about it. But what you're looking for is not in a bottle. What you need is not in a hit. Come on, somebody. What you need is not in a one-night stand. What you need is not in shacking. And playing like you married. No, 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 no. What you need is only in the name of Jesus. And he says sometimes even church folks, you got to remind them, I thank you, Jesus. Lord, hallelujah. Of who they are and whose they are. And the Bible, the Bible, the Bible the Bible is clear. He says that stir up the gift of God, which is which is uh, 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 was given to you by the putting on of hands. Uh -huh. For God has not what given us the spirit of fear, but of power. <laughs> I've given you power so that you don't have to shack up. 
I'm giving you power so that you don't find yourself at the liquor store. I'm giving you power that you're not hanging out at the club looking for a one night stand. You know, church folks go to the club, well, they ain't going right now. They meeting at Starbucks. But I've given you power to be able to stand the temptations of this flesh. And, and, and Paul talking here, he said, God gave us power and love and a sound mind. And a sound mind, my brothers and sisters, can only come through sound doctrine. Anything less than that is called an unstable mind. And a double-minded man, the Bible says, is unstable in all of his ways. So you thought you came out of that last situation. You thought you was going to be all right. You thought that was the end of the addiction. You thought that was the end of the abuse. But just a little while later, you found yourself right back in the same predicament that you asked God to deliver from. Me. Oh, I'm not gonna get no help. I'm not gonna get no help. I'm not gonna get no help. Oh, God, I'm not gonna get no help. Let me give you an example right quick. The Bible says that there was some religious leaders. They were characters in Ephesus who, who, who pretended to have special miracle working power. A, a man by the name of Cephas, you remember him? Who was identified as a Jew, a Jewish leader. He was a chief priest and he had seven sons who went around driving out devils. Lord, help me right there. He, he, he got these sons who were, who were running around, hallelujah, doing exorcisms on devils. Casting out devils. I have to read this over and over and over and over again to, to really understand. They was doing good for a while. Because you can pretend for a while. Like you really got it all together. But sooner or later, there's going to be a crack that's going to reveal everything about you. You know you can't get a crack in your armor. And, and you could be leaking and not knowing. These, these seven sons went around casting out demons. Ooh. The one day. They, they, they heard Paul speaking and preaching and casting out devils. And so they said, well, we're going to do it Paul's way. Because you can have a form of godliness. You can have all the songs down. You can have the shout and the dance down. You, you can have the speaking in tongues down. You can have the paying your tithes and, and giving an offering and, and, and helping old ladies across the street. You can have all of that down. But one day, they, they, they said to a demon, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preached, I command you to come out. And, and, and the Bible says, it lets us know that the demon that they were trying to cast out, refused to come out. Well, how do you know he refused to come out? Because he started talking to them. He said, well, well now Jesus I know, and, 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 and Paul I know, but who in the world are you? Who, who are you to command me to come out. Uh, the Bible says that the demon turned on them violently and jumped on them and overpowered them and, and whooped their tails. Whooped them so bad that they left 
naked without their clothes. Come on, somebody. Well, there's some things we can learn from this. This account of Cephas' son. First, the demons are dangerous. You play with fire, you're going to get burnt. I try to drop the mic. <laughs> you play with fire, you gonna get burnt. I read a comment the other day, blew my mind. It said, you, you, you have an unprotected sex, and you got pregnant, and now you all mad. What did you expect was gonna happen? And the comment said, get a flat screen TV. When you play with fire, the Bible says, can a man take fire in his bosom and not be burned? Right. When you play with fire, you're going to be burned. What is done in secret shall be shouted from the rooftop. What's done in the closet is going to be brought out to the open. I thought I was at church, at Zion Church of Jesus Christ, so, where we just believe, hallelujah, living right for God. Woo! Hey! There's nothing that we do that God does not know about. And you ought to be grateful. You ought to be thankful that he ain't revealed your mess. Because he gives you chance after chance to work it out. Uh, these cats got they, they, these cats got beat down. And, and, and it's obvious they had no respect for the name of Jesus. Uh, demons recognize value, not value, but uh, valid authority. And they actually fear God. It's important to know that the authority over demons belongs only to Jesus and to those whom he gives power. The demons in, in Acts chapter 19 said, to G, to, said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but, but, but who are you? In other words, what authority are you standing on? What authority do you have? You, you can't formulate a ritual or, or, or try to invoke Jesus into your situation without his authority. There's no real delivery power without the name of Jesus, without him giving you the authority. The power belongs to Jesus, but he gave us power. Thank you, uh, let us get on. And, 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 and Jesus, it was him. It was him, Jesus, who was crucified. He that knew no sin became sin. Hallelujah. He was crucified. It was Jesus who died. It was Jesus who was buried. And it was Jesus who rose on the third day from the grave with all power in earth and heaven in his hand. Come on, somebody. The Bible says, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made of himself no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, oh God, he humbled himself. A lot of us can't get what we need from God because we don't know how to humble ourselves. He says, humble yourselves up under the mighty hand of God and, and he will exalt you in due season. It's the season where he does the work. So, it says, and being Found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became what? Obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and has given him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. He says of things in the heavens. 
and things in the earth. And things, what? Under the earth. That every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. It, it was Jesus that sacrificed his life. It, it, it was Jesus that died for my sin and for your sins. The Bible says one day, that same Jesus, that they put nails in his hand. They put nails in his feet. They hung him high. They pierced him in the side. The Bible says, out came blood and water. He hung his head. And then he died. But that's not the end of the story. They placed him in a borrowed tomb. The Bible says he went down into the uttermost part of hell. Kicked down the door. <laughs> Took the keys, hallelujah, out of the devil's hand of death and life. Come on, somebody. Came back up out of the hell that he was in. And the Bible says, hallelujah, that he rose on the third day just like he said. He said, no man take my life, I lay it down. But on the third day, I'm going to pick it up again. And he got up out the grave with all power in his hand. Somebody ought to say, he got up with power so I could live right. He got up with power so I could talk right. He got up with power so I can walk right. He got up with power so I can treat you right. He got up with power so I can live right. Somebody shout hallelujah. He got up with all power. In his head. When the disciples, hallelujah, who were on the run, and I'm closing. Saw Jesus for the last time before he was taken up. They were standing there talking to him about things that should happen. And the Bible says, while they were talking, he was taken up on a cloud, out of their sight. Bible says there were two men standing there. And the men asked them, you men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing? The same Jesus that was taken up is coming back again in like manner. He's coming back for a church, a glorious church, that he might present it to himself. Hey, listen, he told Peter, he said, Peter, I'm going to give you the keys. But Peter, you can't redeem my church. I got to come do this myself. He told Paul, Paul, I'm going to give you sufficient grace for your affliction. But Paul, hallelujah, I'm not sending you back to redeem my church. He said, I'm coming back myself. He gave James, hallelujah, he gave James the ability to count it all joy when you fall into diamond temptation. But, but, but James, you are not. I can't send you back to redeem this church because this church was purchased by my own blood. Oh, God, help me right there. I got to do this one myself. That there's some things I believe God will allow you to do. There's some things God will give you the ability to do. But there is something that he has to do that nobody else can do. And that is to bring his church back to him. Well, preacher, how do you know that? Well, I was reading the other day over in, I believe it was, Testimony. There it is, kids. <laughs> and he told them that the Lord himself shall what? Ascend from heaven with the 
to shout of the archangel and the dead in Christ. Good God, hallelujah. That's why, that's why I guess we, we don't have to we don't have to cry and we don't have to moan like other folks because if they went, if they went that way in Christ, we're gonna see them again. He, he, he tells them, he tells them, I, 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 I'm coming to do this thing. And the Bible lets us know that when Jesus comes back, oh, I don't know about you, but 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 I want to be ready. I don't want to be half-baked. I don't want to be in the middle of some mess. I don't want to be thinking about if this is what I should do or that's what I should do. I want to be ready. Because when he says, come, my people. When he says, come, my people. He is going to snatch us up out of here. I don't see too many people excited about the rapture. But, 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 but I need you to get excited about the rapture. Because we're living, hallelujah, and we should be living rapture ready. Evangelist, see, we, we should be rapture ready. That, that, that means I've got my homework done. That means, hallelujah, I, I, I've gotten out of self and, and I've allowed God's will to, to, to be my will. Come on, somebody. That, that means my, my, my steps are ordered by the Lord. That, that means I'm walking in His way. I'm talking in His way. I'm preaching and teaching in His way. Come on, somebody. Why? Because He gave me the ability. He gave me the authority. He gave me power to be able to walk like He walked. He walked on water. Oh God, help me right there. He walked the wall. And so when he wraps us about it here, the Bible lets us know that there's going to be some left behind. And I don't want to be left behind. So Paul's story, I don't want to be left behind. Paul's story, I don't want to be left behind. Children's story, I don't want to be left behind. If Yahweh don't want to go, if Daddy don't want to go, Grandma don't want to go, I'm going. I'm made up in my mind. I'm going to see the king. Somebody shout glory! Somebody shout glory! Somebody shout glory! I'm glory! Just see the key. There ain't gonna be no sad story. Somebody gonna shout, I ain't got no sad story. I wanna hear him say, well done! My pen is very close to me. I wanna see his face. It's me! Hallelujah. Whoa. The Bible says no man knows the day or the hour when the Son of Man shall return. But he's coming back, y'all. He's coming back like a thief in the night. Two will be laid in the bed. One shall be taken up. One shall be left behind. Two shall be in the field. One shall be taken up. One shall be left behind. He's coming back. That, that 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 guard that was standing there, Anthony. He said, "Surely, surely, just talk to you, the Son of God. Surely, he's coming, y'all. It ain't, it ain't no time to play. Ain't no time to be trying to think about living for him. Living for him. You got to be in this thing all the way. You got to have both feet." In this thing, you can't straggle the fence. You, you can't keep thinking, hallelujah, well, tomorrow you'll allow me an opportunity to be forgiven. No. 
Huh? See, that the devil is lying to you. He told the rich man who, who had all his riches, he said, my soul is fat, I'm rich, I, I got all this, I will build barns and store. He said, fool! We got some foolish people who think that they can live any kind of way and think that God is not watching us. He said, oh, your, your soul is required of you this night. I asked earlier, and I thought I was being nice. Somebody ought to thank God Amen. for even being here in this parking lot today. Hey. Hey. They still, they still sit there acting like God ain't got nothing for them, and they, but they still got it all together. And, coming back. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And I will come again to receive you unto myself. He's the Alpha, y'all. Means he knows it all. He's the Omega. He's the beginning. knows everything in between. The same Jesus. Not a different Jesus. The same Jesus that walked on water, opened blind eyes, fed 5,000, raised Lazarus from the dead. Same Jesus that we've read about. Dr. Williams in Sunday school. Sunday after Sunday. He's coming, y'all. If you don't believe nothing else, you can believe that. He is on his way back. Don't let us say too late. Too late. Because you had your opportunity today. If you're here today, under the sound of my voice, and you don't know the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sin. You can come today. We, we, we have water, we have ministers that, that will baptize you in the name of the Lord and Savior, Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. And God said you shall. Shall is a promise. Shall means it's going to happen. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. See, the gift of the Holy Ghost is the power. That's the authority that he wants to give you. Will you come today? Will you come and give your life to God? I know you've done it your way, and I know you believe you got it right. But God drew you here today. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He drew you here today to offer you the opportunity to really be saved. Oh, God, I just feel something in my spirit that, 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 that even the backslider should come home. You can come home today. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Let, let's reconnect the gap. Be let, 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 let's, let's bandage up the breach. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come this morning? I know, I know, I know. I know. It's, 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 it's hard. It's hard. It's hard for you to let go because you're saying to me, you don't understand. You don't, you don't know my situation. You, 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 don't, you don't understand what I'm going through. You don't understand uh, what I've been through. You don't understand what folks have done to me. You don't understand how many tears I've had to cry. You, you don't understand the lies. You don't, you don't understand the abuse. You don't understand the touch that I feel. 
even when I'm at home by myself or my abuser. You, you, you just don't understand what they did to me. God says, I understand. God says, better than understanding, I know all about it. And he said, come. Come, let me hold you. Let me, let me touch that in the most sacred part of you. Let me lift up your broken heart. Will you come today? Now listen, there's no shame in coming. Because we all, we all got issues. Hallelujah. We all, we all got, got issues. That only Jesus can address. Will you come? Come. Backslider, come on home. Come on home. If you just feel that you're just not where you should be, you know that, that, that you could be doing better. Will you come? Come. 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 Come on up here. Come on. I'm asking you to come. 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 Pastor. 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 Everybody come. Pastor. 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 Listen. I've been, I've been through some things that 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 would have took other people out of here, and, and, and I know that it was God that that brought me through them. But listen, but listen, God, God didn't just bring you through that for you to tell somebody about it. He brought you through that that you might live for Him. Because everybody can tell somebody about Jesus. But he's saying, right now, I need you to come. I, I need you to come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Right here. This is what we're going to do this. We're going to do this right here. Uh, this is holy ground. Hey, God. Hey. This, this, this right here, this is holy ground. Amen. Amen. This is where God is about to move. He's about to reconnect some lives. He, he's about to turn some things around. And you better, better are ashamed. And you better are afraid to come and stand here. Because you, you, you think, hallelujah, you don't want nobody to know. God already knows where you are. God already knows what you're going through. God already knows how to deliver you. But he said, come. He wants to say, come. Come, 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 come. come, come. God said, come. The Spirit of the Lord says, come. Hey, tomorrow's not promised. Tomorrow's not promised. This afternoon is not promised. God says, I need you to come. I set you up. To, I set you up to come today. This is your appointment. This is your time. This is the place, hallelujah, where I'm going to establish you, restore you. I'm going to bring you out of what you're in. But I need you to come. Come, 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 come. come. Listen, more. Yes, come on, 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 don't be offended. You this is your new beginning. Hey, this is your new beginning. You can have a new beginning. You can have a fresh start. But when you come, just come. You take your song.
Come on, go ahead and lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Hallelujah. Open your mouth. Begin to speak to him. Give him the fruits of your lips. Begin to speak to him. Tell him all about it. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Just a little talk.
Come on, somebody. We just set the atmosphere. We get ready. Hallelujah. To usher in the power of God. Hallelujah. We're right there on the brink of a new beginning. No! Somebody shout hallelujah. Right there on the brink of the new beginning. And I thank God. I don't know about you, but go and send your revival along. Sit it down. translator for you. disciples, he, he blew on them and gave them the Holy Ghost. And then he instructed them and said, go ye into the upper room and, and wait and there you will be uh, filled with power. You remember that? And, and the Holy Ghost fell in the upper room. But even after that, they had to have another touch. And sometimes, hallelujah, that's exactly what we need to help us to finish this race. Uh, we, we need another touch, another uh, another refilling of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So raise your hands, daughter. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. I'm, I'm going to ask y'all to stand six feet apart. There you go. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Go, John. Go, John. God said, I'm going I'm to allow my goodness to pass by you. And when you feel the fresh wind, who say God help me right there? He said, I'm going to touch you again. God, I feel it. I feel it already. <laughs> Hey, 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 we'll break through, we'll break through, we'll break through, we're not pretending, we, we won't, we'll break through, we want this thing, hallelujah, to be effective, yeah, right now, with the name of Jesus, oh God, hallelujah, loose here, Satan, ah, loose here, devil, you have the power, you have the authority, but the power is in the name of Jesus, and Jesus alone, and Jesus says, I have given you power. Come on, come on, Zion. Put your hands together as we close. We thank you all for your coming out. Hallelujah. 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 Thank God for seeing all your lovely faces on today. God bless you. God keep you. 
God make his face to shine upon you. And remember this week, hallelujah, as we go toward Easter, hallelujah, we're going to call a fast here in a moment, but as we go toward Easter, hallelujah, we want to permeate the atmosphere with the power of God. We, we want to cancel every assignment of the enemy. We, we want to take away every negative thought out of the minds of the people. Hallelujah. We want to come against the enemy's camp and tear his kingdom down. Come on, somebody. As God begins to reopen the, the state of California, we need God's power to rest on us. We need his keeping power to continue to keep us. Hallelujah. So we ain't playing, we praying. Come on, somebody. We're praying for a move of God in Del Paso Heights. And I believe it can start right here with Zion Church. I don't even believe he's in this parking lot. I don't even believe it's in this parking lot. Hallelujah. You know why I like noise? The Bible says there was noise that Jesus was in the house. Whenever he's in the house, there ought to be some noise. God bless you. We love you. Amen. Be safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.